Greetings adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we are in Gatlinburg, Tennessee to check out a little bit of spice. To start out, we're here at the Pepper Palace, which hosts the world's largest hot sauce museum. Let's heat things up. We're going to a place that you've never heard of before. It's The Pepper Palace has been here for years in Gatlinburg, but more recently, they've opened an exciting addition, the world's largest hot sauce museum. In the window of the museum, they have Wilbur Scoville's compounding book, the original one that he used to take notes when figuring things out about peppers. He is actually the inventor of the Scoville organoleptic test which is a test that's used to measure just how hot and spicy a pepper is. It's almost overwhelming how many different types of hot sauce there really are. The number of bottles in here is crazy, but it's really cool getting to see all the different labels, all the different names, and just the little features of every individual one. Using peppers to spice up food has of course been around for thousands of years throughout numerous different cultures. However, the first commercially available bottle of what we'd consider hot sauce today in America appeared in 1807 from Massachusetts. Since then, there's been an explosion of different flavors and recipes used to create hot sauce, all with various ingredients. The one thing that connects all of these bottled concoctions? Each and every one contains chili pepper. No matter what you may be a fan of in the sports world, there's almost certainly a hot sauce that fits your team. Here we had an amazing representation of hot sauce from every single major college football team. If you weren't really into college football, they also had a brand that represented each of the professional football teams in the NFL. There were also plenty of sauces for baseball fans out there, one for each of the major MLB teams, and even a brand of sauces that covered all the teams in the NBA. This brand of sauce is from Louisiana, and just to make sure you know that it is, they put a couple of alligator heads in there to help show off that Cajun spirit. Who 
Who knew alligators were such big fans of hot sauce? Now, of course, each hot sauce varies in how hot it actually is. To determine how hot a sauce is, we gotta go back to what we mentioned earlier, the Scoville meter. Here we have the Scoville meter that they use to judge the hotness of peppers. And we start at the bell pepper down here at zero, and that shoots all the way up to over two million units with the Carolina Reaper. Now, even though the Carolina Reaper hits the top of the Scoville at 2.2 million, there are still many hot sauces out there that temperature far exceeds that 2.2. Using concentrated pepper extract and other chemicals, people who invent these things are able to jack up that Scoville meter way, way up there to make it just as hot as possible. The Pepper Palace actually puts out several hot sauces of their own that tend to really climb up that meter. You'll notice that many of these bottles all come from the same brand. They just happen to have different flavors, which represent the different taste patterns in each one and the different temperatures that you can expect. Most companies tend to have some on the lighter side and go all the way up to that really hot atomic sauce. And even for those who don't happen to be really big into the hot sauce world, there are several brands that have become household names that everybody recognizes no matter who they are. One of those famous brands is of course Tabasco Sauce. Besides being one of the most known sauce companies, they're also one of the oldest in the United States, having been around since 1868. Since then, they've always managed to be one of the top-selling brands in the hot sauce industry. They even offer a very cool tour of their company headquarters. You might have to check that out sometime. One wall of the museum is dominated by this massive timeline that tells you pretty much the entire history of hot sauce from beginning all the way up to present day. Then for fun, right next to that, you're also treated to a timeline of the Pepper Palace itself. From when it was conceived and built all the way up through the museum opening and where they hope to go in the future. Very, very cool company. The most widely used peppers in the United States hot sauces are cayenne peppers, chipotle peppers, habanero peppers, and jalapeno peppers. Louisiana style hot sauce, like the ones in these cases, tend to contain red chili peppers, such as Tabasco or Cayenne, vinegar, and salt. Simple, but delicious. The use of the chili pepper is actually what classifies something as a hot sauce. No matter how hot or not a sauce is, chili peppers have to be present in the recipe to officially be considered a hot sauce. The other ingredients added, though, can be almost anything. Other vegetables, fruits, 
and a wide range of various tasty things have all been used to create hot sauce. And like most things, this has given rise to healthy competition, where they have many competitions all over the country to decide just who has the best hot sauce. Pepper Palace themselves have been in many of these competitions and have happily walked away with several handsome trophies. Even though hot sauce can have a big effect on your body, there's nothing bad about it. In fact, chili peppers are full of vitamins and completely cholesterol free, so eat up. Interestingly enough, hot sauce can actually be addictive. Because peppers contain natural elements that irritate your stomach, mouth, and nose, your body's first reaction is to release endorphins, which can act like a natural painkiller of sorts. Endorphins are what elevate your mood and make you feel happy. So, even if your mouth is burning, your brain is eager to get another hit. And that sweaty reaction you can sometimes get when the hot sauce is just a little too hot is actually called gustatory perspiration. And the best way to quickly cool your mouth down isn't actually water. It's a nice, tall glass of milk. Hot sauce is continuing to grow in popularity. Over 54% of American households currently have hot sauce as a condiment in their kitchen. And the market for hot sauces has grown about 5% every year for the past five years. Talk about being on fire. One interesting story that they shared with us here at the Pepper Palace is actually about how their hot sauce saved a man's life. In 2015, Randy Schmitz of Chicago, Illinois took a vacation and ended up visiting a Pepper Palace location in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. While browsing the store with his family, Randy was feeling up to the challenge of trying a sample of a very hot sauce called Flashbang. Flashbang was a sauce created by the Pepper Palace that combined Carolina Reaper, Scorpion, Jalakia, and Habanero peppers, all into one very hot concoction. Randy took a very tiny sample of this sauce that came in a bottle that was shaped like a hand grenade, and he was blown away by the heat. He felt like he had recovered from the initial tasting, but after a few minutes, he started feeling poorly and stepped outside to sit on a bench to collect himself. His family looked out the window just in time to see him suddenly twitching and shaking violently. Randy was having a massive seizure. After being rushed to the emergency room, doctors ordered a full MRI of Randy's brain, and that's where they detected a growing cancerous tumor. Within a few days, Randy had surgery and procedures done to remove the brain tumor and clear out any traces of cancer. In a letter Randy wrote to the Pepper Palace, he claims the hot sauce is what saved his life. The doctors did not know how long the cancerous tumor had been there, and they said if it did not get activated, it would have just kept growing and expanding. I had surgery, got the tumor removed, went on radiation and chemotherapy, and I am now cancer free. Your flashbang pepper sauce saved my life. The hot sauce had triggered his seizure and allowed the doctors to find the tumor. He recovered so quickly that he didn't even have to postpone his wedding that was set for just a few months later. The Pepper Palace received his letter and sent back a wedding present, a year's supply of hot sauce, including flashbang. So next time somebody asks you to try some hot sauce, who knows, it might just end up saving your life. Of course, hot sauce culture 
has moved far beyond just the simple sauces themselves. You can find it in candy, there's Monopoly games made out of it, and countless books, magazines, TV shows, all dedicated to chili peppers and hot sauce. The hot sauce brands all seem to do everything they can to outshine each other. Here you can even buy an entire ass-kicking crazy ass set. I'm not sure what exactly the goggles are for, but maybe it's to not get hot sauce in your eyes. There were some bottles that were designed to look like cowboys, which I thought was kind of cool with their cowboy hat there being the part you take off. And then this brand went with the Dalmatian, the popular fire dog. Death was a very popular subject for hot sauces. I don't know if that makes me want to try it anymore. Then we even had some that were based around Christmas and had some fancy Christmas clothes. And Santa Claus himself endorsed a few of these bottles. A couple bottles on display were even historical ones, such as this rare purple hot sauce bottles. These came from some of the original Tabasco sauces. This whole section was political hot sauces. Definitely a lot of fiery tempers you can take away from that. They certainly weren't lacking creativity. This bottle shaped like a snake was really, really cool. But it's hard to beat a bottle that looks like it's sealed with macaroni and cheese. I mean, come on, who doesn't want that? We then had some more historical bottles, including this Texas peat bottle from the 1930s. Hard to believe it lasted this long. These special bottles even came with your own little voodoo doll with it. I wonder if you could feed the voodoo doll hot sauce and have somebody else's mouth catch on fire. <laughs> After thoroughly looking at everything in the museum, we decided to head into the actual store part to see what we could find. So here at the Pepper Palace, you're actually able to sample all of the hot sauces. Let's see if we can talk Blake into trying the hottest one. You actually have to sign a waiver to do it. This is the waiver here, and this sauce is actually hotter than the flashbang. Good experience, though. Okay. Should I buy a water beforehand? No. No? I'll make it worse, man. Yeah. Oh, no. So it, today's the... Flatline, seven million. Seven million? Oh, no. How did you put it in the sink? All right. That's enough to make me cry. There we go. <sighs> okay. Wow. It did not take that much. Okay. 
How do you feel? That, that's really hot. And that's not that much either. Mm -hmm. You don't need, yeah. Woo! Okay. Yeah, it's hot. Now, sometimes a good cry is a good cry. I almost cried from the other <laughs> one. Oh. So if you had to rate this one out of ten, where would you where would you put that? I mean, I wouldn't personally eat this stuff, but it's it's if you love hot sauce, it's good. Good flavor. Oh, yeah. It's just, just hot. It's really hot. All right. You're out okay. on the ground, so I guess you survived. Yeah. And just for fun, some horseradish. Not a big wasabi fan, but let's see how this tastes. Oh my god. Oh. Shit. Okay. <laughs> well, that was definitely entertaining. While Blake cools down a bit, we're gonna shake things up with another unique museum in the area. Join us for part two of our Spice of Life series as we tour the Salt and Pepper Shaker Museum.